Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video series we're going to be looking at work solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam that will be sat by students studying a BTEC Level 3 National in Engineering. Now the document that we're referring to in particular today are the sample assessment materials for the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam and this document is issue 2 that is or has previously been available on the Edexcel website. Question 13 states, a person is moving an 8kg load up an inclined plane. We've then got a diagram and we can see that the incline of that plane is 30 degrees, we've got the object on the slope and we've also got labelled the frictional resistance force and the normal reaction force. Question 13 asks us to calculate the frictional resistance force acting on the load. So it's asking us to calculate this force here and the frictional resistance force we normally state as F subscript R for resistance force. Now in terms of calculating the resistance force we need to do two things. We first of all need to determine our normal reaction force and then we're going to multiply that by our coefficient of friction. So the way we can write that is mu which is our coefficient of friction times nR which is our normal reaction. Now underneath the question it specifies that the coefficient of friction between the load and the inclined plane is 0.4. So we know the coefficient of friction, all that's left for us to do is determine the normal reaction force. Now if we study our diagram, what we have here is we have an indication of the weight because weight is mass times gravity. And when we approach this type of problem, as we can see there, what we normally do is we modify our x and y axes and we modify them so that x is in line with the slope and y is perpendicular to the slope. Now in order to calculate the normal reaction, we're not interested in what's happening in the x direction there. We're only interested in what's happening in the y direction because that normal reaction force only has a y component. And the size of that y component needs to be balanced by a force in the opposite direction. And we actually only have one force acting in the opposite direction, or to be more accurate, the component of one force. And it will be this component here of the weight acting downwards. The weight forms a right angle triangle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw that triangle a little bit larger, but what we're basically saying is that the normal reaction force there is balanced by the component of the weight. So they're equal in size. So let's go down to our working area and sketch the triangle. So we have a triangle where the hypotenuse is the weight indicated on our diagram by mass times gravity. We have our slope there. We have a component of that weight acting in the new y direction. And we have a component of that weight acting in the new x direction like so. The angle here, hopefully you can see by inspection, is going to be the same as the angle of the slope, 30 degrees. So let's start calculating some values here. First of all we want to find the magnitude of our weight, which is the longest side on that triangle. And weight is just mass times gravity. The mass was given in the question as 8 kilograms and gravity is 9.81. Therefore the weight of our object in newtons is 78.48 newtons. And we're going to leave that as two decimal places. So the hypotenuse, or the longest side of our triangle there, is 78.48 long. But we're not actually interested in the hypotenuse. What we're interested in here is the new y component. And I'm going to switch colours. And the force we're trying to find, or the component of the force we're trying to find, is that line there because that's equal in size to our normal reaction. Let's label our triangle. The longest side is the hypotenuse, the side opposite the angle is the opposite and the remaining side is the adjacent. So here we can see we need to find the adjacent. Now we have a formula for calculating this. The formula states that adjacent equals hypotenuse cos theta. So let's calculate the magnitude of our adjacent there. We have the adjacent equals the hypotenuse 78.48 cos of the angle, well, the angle's 30 degrees 
giving us an adjacent equal to 67.97 to two decimal places. Now here's the important thing. The magnitude of that force is equal to our normal reaction. So therefore our normal reaction is also 67.97 newtons. We know that the magnitude of those are equal because of what we spoke about earlier, where the forces need to balance in the y direction. So the force acting in the new y direction here needs to be balanced by the normal reaction force. So the diagram there isn't drawn to scale. This brings us one step closer to calculating our friction force because our friction force, as we specified earlier, is the coefficient of friction times the normal reaction. So our final calculation then is to calculate the friction force or the resistive force, which is mu nr. Mu is given in the question as 0 0.4. nr we just calculated as 67.97, giving us a friction force equal to 27.19 newtons. And that's accurate to two decimal places. So we've calculated the frictional resistance force acting on the load as requested by the question. Now part B is just a short answer question. It's asked us to state one method of reducing friction within an engineering system. And the way that we reduce friction is by using lubrication or using oils. So the simple answer for this question would be lubrication or you could write oil. And that brings us to the end of question 13, which has been allocated a total of eight marks.